Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Thursday. Oh, happy Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, happy Wednesday. Oh, hope everyone's week is going great. Thanks so much for joining us on the boost. We're talking about this idea called honor and why it's so critical for us because it's really the, the clarity of what we believe in. I got a voice note yesterday from an incredible woman who is a leader of a great organization. And she had mentioned to me something wonderful, which is this concept of the, the pursuit of clarity. And in many ways, that's what we're all doing. We're all leaders of our own organizations called our lives. And life has a way of getting us pulled down into the details. And we get thrown by being lost in these trees. And it could very easily keep us in the trees for most of our lives. We can get lost. I remember once being on a train. I live in Long Island, so we take the LIRR down into the city. And for those who, who travel the LIRR, it's a, it's a nicer train than like a typical New York City subway. So some of the seats like face into each other, you know, like they're nicer seats. And I remember sitting, let's say like in the back of the car, and there was two rows that face into each other that sit between both of these rows, let's say like eight people. And wonderful, God, God, God bless, wonderful creatures of God. Just people came on, and I guess a whole group of people came on. And they sat down, maybe the third stop from me, and then from that until Penn Station, 45 minutes, there was this heated discussion between all eight people about a show. I, I think it's called The Bachelorette. I'm not I'm getting that show right. Basically, it's a show about a woman who gets to choose between a whole bunch of guys. I would think they were talking about like some nuclear program that's gonna destroy our country. Like you would think they were speaking about the elections, the heat, the fighting, the details, the nuance. It was amazing to me. God bless them. Everyone can do whatever they want. I'm not judging someone's time. I watch sports, like, but it reminds me that if we're not careful, we can get lost in whatever is presented in front of us. We can get lost in some family politics for years. We can get lost in so many little things, office drama. We get lost even in sports, get lost in sports. People watch games, and then they talk about games, and they hawk about games, and they watch the analysis of the games. And by the time they're done, by the end of the week, all they've really done in their free time is obsess over something that's not going to matter in three or four years. If we're not careful to pull our eyes up and be always looking at what our top goals are, clarity of what my core purpose is, then I'm gonna get lost in this world, not because I'm a bad person or because I am not capable of more. It's because my brain is supposed to survive and whatever is in front of me will be always presented as most important. That's the limbic system at work. Whatever is in front of you will have a heightened level of importance. That's why the chocolates that are in front of you are more valuable than the chocolates you can get in a week from now. It's not because you're making a logical decision because the limbic system allows what's in front of you to take on a unique importance just because it's in front of you, especially if it's emotional. And so what we need to be doing is identifying the things that we really wanna stand for and then putting that in front of us. We have to put in front of our eyes more examples, more things that remind us, that bring out, that surround us 
with qualities and with traits and with values that we want to naturally aspire to. That's why they say you are the average of your four closest friends or your five closest friends. I don't know if you heard that expression before. It's a very powerful expression. You're the average of your five closest friends, which means what, 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 what you put around you is going to influence you. You see this all the time with people. The people that they surround themselves with, they start talking like them and acting like them. And, and then it becomes sort of them. And you see people that just have different types of friends. And then over the course of their lives, that's who they, that, that's what feels comfortable for them. It's because they're exposed to the behavior and then that becomes into your neuroplasticity and that becomes what's comfortable because what's familiar is comfortable. And what's familiar is what you see because what you see forms neuroplasticity. See how all that connects? I hope that was clear. That, I hope that, I hope that like calculation made sense. Whatever I put in front of me, my brain's going to adapt to. Whatever my brain adapts to is going to feel familiar. Whatever, feel, whatever feels familiar is what I'm going to do because my brain could do big stuff. And when I put people around me and when I put things around me indiscriminately, I will just go and just like a reed. I'm just, fly, I'm just with the wind. But when I identify the things that I need to honor, and place those around me, when I work to put the people in my life that I respect, when I work to read the stories of people that I look up to, when I work to see and hear and learn wisdom, when I work for that, and I put it into my life consistently, I will naturally be this way. Because when I surround myself with things, that's the thing that I ultimately incline to be. So if, my, if I live in a world, but I honor something else, that I'm going to incline to the thing in which I honor. So I can be sitting in an environment that's filled with wisdom, but if I am surrounded constantly with the pursuit of wealth, I am going to honor money, even if my brain says it's, it's a, you need to live and you want to buy nice things, but that's not the goal. I have a good friend of mine. His name is Ben Perry. He's the CEO of one of the greatest organizations on the planet, Momentum. He lives in Silver Spring, Maryland. I asked him what it was like once to live there. And he says, you know what I love about that area? He says, there's so many people in the Maryland area that are, um, that are idealistic. Because it's a lot of people are connected to government. And, you know, so there's a lot of people who lives in Rockville. Sorry. Rockville, Maryland. Thank you, Andy. I was, I got Maryland right. It's a standard New York mistake. Rockville, Maryland. Lori Palatnik's from Rockville. Andy Boltex is from Rockville. Ruth Bars. And he said so many people in that area, they're connected to government and they're just, they think they can change the world. And just being there around people like this allows him to feel that. Now, everyone has their own area. But it, it, what, it, what he's getting to is his concept of honor. Lori is from Toronto. This concept of honor. I have to surround myself with people that I respect, that I'm growing towards. I have to surround myself with stories so that I can put in front of me, I have to read stories of people that I want to be like. I have to tell my family these, these incidents. I have to always place before my eyes the things that I want to be because then I will honor it more. And when I have clarity with what I honor, when I put a priority on what I honor, I think Richard just said something that was brilliant. This is why, did I just read this? Yeah, that's right. It's exactly right. Richard just nailed it. That's why I had this in when I grew up, my, my, my rabbi would put pictures of great people so we can look at them. It's amazing. You tell a lot about what you honor by who's hanging in your wall, who's hanging on your wall. And why are they hanging there? When we surround ourselves in our minds, in our speech, with 
the people that exemplify, the things that exemplify what we aspire to, we send signals. We send signals to ourselves to create a list, a pantheon of, of what we want. And we then start to shift the things that we honor and respect. And when we do that, our brain, which wants to survive, remember survival is social acceptance, but social acceptance really is based on culture. So in some societies, acceptance is based on scholarship. In some society, it's based on athletic prowess. In some societies, based on physical beauty. And in some societies, based on financial wealth. Where you put yourself is where you will feel that you need to be accepted. And then you will incline to do those things. And me and you can create a subculture called our lives. Our families could create a subculture, our communities, our friendship circles. We can create subcultures in which what is around me is going to naturally incline me to do things. And this is why it's so critical is because then it becomes easier to achieve your real goals. Life is not supposed to be difficult, well, not this difficult. And the reason why it is so difficult sometimes is because we are not placing ourselves in a position to be successful. When we surround ourselves with the things and the people and the ideas and the ideals, before we have to do them, before we have to fight for them, before we have to go out and like pull ourselves away, before we have to feel bad, but all that stuff, before we have to do any of those things, just by putting ourselves in the right scenarios and, and surroundings, by recognizing the impact of our subculture on who we are, just by changing that, it starts to naturally change ourselves and we naturally incline to the things we wanna do and then we're aligned. We don't have to worry that we're gonna to get to the end of our lives and look back and go, man, I gotta give away all my money because I spent all my time making it and now I'm like, I feel empty. We don't have to get to the end of our lives and feel like I missed something. We never have to, and we never have to sidestep our way of living because we've always driven through the physical world with our eyes higher. It's a famous line when Jacob fell asleep. If you remember this, the biblical story of Jacob falling asleep and dreaming of the ladder, Jacob's ladder. And the ladder was firmly planted on the earth, but the, the top of the ladder he couldn't see, it was in the sky, it was in the heavens. And the rabbis speak about this concept of our lives. Our feet have to be firmly planted on this ground. That means we have to be normal and we have to function in society. We have to live and breathe this world, but our heads always have to be in the clouds. We always have to be above it. We always have to be thinking big. And when we marry the vision of depth and the actions of this world, that's what that's when we live. And we don't have to, we don't have to feel empty. We don't have to always fight with ourselves. It's who we are. Stories of people that were in, have incredible integrity. When we fill our minds and our when we're watching things that are not just like some thing that was given to us by some Hollywood studio that just wants to keep us entertained long enough that we don't click off. But when we put in our heads and in our minds and in our children's heads and minds, real stories of integrity, then when we go out in the world and somebody says something or somebody gives us something that doesn't belong to us, it feels natural to just give it back because it's not honest. It feels natural to give charity because how many times have we heard stories of people that give the get or that that's what makes them feel good or whatever it is. Once we take ownership to identify and to surround ourselves with the things that, are, that we honor, it'll become easier. And now here's why this is so critical. Because we have to understand the difference between how the spiritual world works and how the physical world works. The physical world is based on quantity. Physical things require lots of them because it's physical. And in the physical world, the more you have physical, the more you are successful physically, right? It's not like you get like one really good dollar 
is how many dollars do you get? Physical existence isn't like I have one outfit that I love. Physical existence is I have many outfits that I love. I have a large home. I have access to lots of things. There's more food. Like physical material perspectives are based on quantity. Spiritual, metaphysical perspectives is based on quality. It's not about how much you have in the spiritual world. It's the depth and the quality of what you have. Physical wants more, spiritual wants deeper. It's not about how much you have, right? The rabbis teach us in Perkei Avot, Ethics of Our Father, who is happy, he who is happy with his lot. What they're telling you is it doesn't matter how big your house is. The person who's happy with a small little apartment is so much better off than someone who's miserable in a massive mansion. A qualitative perspective on life. Now, quality requires intention. How do, I, how do I transcend from quantity to quality? I have to transcend from physical relationship to spiritual relationship. And that takes place over the bridge called intention. Intention means when I am somewhere, I am there. I am intentional in my actions. My brain isn't lost. When I pray, if I can get five intentional minutes of full presence, it is more impactful than if I show up and I space out for an hour. When I spend time with the person in front of me, this is where a lot of parents, especially parents that have jobs, young parents with that are working, this applies especially for women. Studies show that women feel this much worse, more worse than men. They feel guilty that they're not in enough places. So women that are working and trying to raise families at the same time, they always feel guilty wherever they are. And the reason is because the world tells us, and this applies to men also, dads love their kids too. And they want to be home with their kids as much as possible too. And the research shows that the reason why it just never works is because when you live a quantitative life, you're constantly not in enough places. So when you're at work, you should be home. When you're at home, you should be just never enough. You never have enough money. You never have enough time. You never have, you never have, you never have. Ne that's our lives. Chasing, 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 chasing the, the quantitative treadmill. But spiritually, it's not about how much time you have with your family. It's how intentional your time is. If you're home with your family for two, three hours a night, and you are all in that, what you can accomplish with your family for a few hours is unbelievable. If you have time to pray or to study and you give it everything which you can accomplish in a short amount of time qualitatively is light years ahead of what someone the whole day that they can study and they're just half in, half out. It applies at work, it applies at friendships, just applies across the board. Remember, intention requires value. You don't intend to do something that you do not honor and respect. That's what we're talking about is so critical. Because if I have an hour to spend with my family or with my spirituality or when wisdom or with my clients or wherever, if I have a certain amount of time and in my heart of heart, I do not honor it or respect it, I lose it. If I don't feel what I'm doing is valuable, if I haven't taken the time to put in the right culture around me, that I am thinking of great people. I won't, when I'm doing the thing I'm doing, in the limited time that I'm doing it, I won't fully put all my all into it because I'm going to incline my heart to the thing in which I honor. So if I'm sitting in front of a book studying spiritual wisdom, but I don't have the time to honor people that are wise, and instead, I just let the world go and I'm working in corporate America. Then when I'm studying, I'm thinking about work. 
And I walk in there and I see a CEO. I'm like, oh, he's wealthy. And I'm all into that conversation. And I may know that spiritual wisdom is so valuable to me. And I want to be a person that is wise and deep. And I want to make a living. But I want both. But I didn't take the time to fully put in front of me that those images, that culture, those friends, those environments that honor spiritual wisdom so that when I am in, put in the situation where I got to deliver the hour of study, I won't be in it here. If I don't spend the time realizing that the reason why I love my grandparents so much is because they dedicated their lives to me and I want so badly my grandkids to, 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 and everybody around me or friends to say they were the greatest friends ever. If I don't realize and recognize that at my eulogy, hopefully, I, you know, Messiah will come for if, if my, if, if, if I go at 120 and I'm the people are at my, at my funeral and they're saying he was the best guy. He was there for me. If I don't have that in my head and the world runs every time someone talks to me, I'm going to be out. Not because I don't want to be, because I'm not going to give quality, my own quality to something that in the depths of my heart, I don't honor. So you see what we're doing here and we'll continue this tomorrow, but I want to just nail it. What we're doing is we are pulling out of our heads this concept called honoring so that we can look at it and play with it. Because when it goes back into our heads, it's going to go into our hearts and it's going to infect our, it's going to impact the, the nuances of our days. And this is where it all happens. Hope that all made sense. If not, email me. I'm gonna. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But I hope. I hope it's making sense. All right. We gotta go. It's time to start our day. All right. I love you guys. Thanks so much for the time. Charlie at charliehour.com. If it's not making sense, we're gonna talk about this again tomorrow. I want to just make sure this is critical. How how the quality of our moments really are connected to the the, the, the hierarchy of what we truly respect. And once that all becomes clear, forget about it. Like you open up a door. Seriously, we open up a door to our lives that was always in front of us, but that we never fully saw. All right. Have a great day. We can talk, we can talk about this forever. I can just keep on going, but I can't. Okay. Have an awesome day. Thanks for tuning in. And with God's help, cannot wait to see you again tomorrow morning.